Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about mysteries, but more specifically one of the mysteries of the moon. Now if you're a conspiracy theorist or if you are one of those people that believe that we've never landed on the moon, um, this video might not be for you because this video is going to assume that scientifically and also logically we have gone to the moon, we have landed on the moon several times and we're of course going back relatively soon according to NASA. But this video specifically is going to discuss this one phenomenon that is not explained, not understood, but has been observed by many different people. And it's very important to understand this phenomenon because it might be dangerous for the future astronauts. And more specifically, we're talking about transient lunar phenomenon. Now, this actually sort of encompasses a lot of things. One of the most common uh, transient lunar phenomena are actually this. You're going to see it right there, where the arrow is pointing. This is basically an asteroid collision with the lunar surface. These are usually relatively small rocks, um, basically micrometeorites that collide with the moon and create a bright flash that's visible and detectable from Earth. But there are other phenomena that are not as easily explained and it seems that they happen several times per week and have been catalogued quite thoroughly by different researchers. And normally these can be anything uh, from a short flash of light, like you just saw, to um, darkening of the surface, sudden changes in color, including um, colors like yellow, brown, red, and um, sudden decreases in brightness or maybe even fluorescent-like lights. They can be um, very quick or they can last up to several minutes or even hours. And here's the thing though, the pictures that we've taken of those phenomena are not really clear. It seems that pretty much everything we have to go on this phenomenon is usually related to the scientist himself or herself explaining it in words. For example, in this article that you can find in the description below that has covered observational phenomena as early as 557 AD up to basically 94, has a few photos that are supposedly showing these phenomena and also the locations of those phenomena, but it's practically impossible to tell the difference. They are, however, really accurately described in words, and there's a lot of uh, both analysis and explanations as to what we might have been looking at. And I'm also putting this link right here that you can find in the description below as well, that is actually from NASA itself, but it's slightly earlier from 1967, that has a tremendously large list of NASA observed transient um, lunar events. Once again, with observational data, but not really pictures that are too clear or not really any explanations that are solid. And honestly, actually, with every um, lunar transient phenomenon, except for this one that you see right here, it's sort of difficult to explain what we could have been looking at. For example, one of the more famous events occurred during the Apollo 11 mission when the astronauts were orbiting the moon, they were um, on the way back to Earth, and the observation from Earth suggested that there was something being seen in one of the craters that they were passing, and so they actually asked the Apollo 11 crew to confirm if uh, these lights were real. And when uh, Apollo 11 Michael Collins looked at this particular crater, he actually saw those lights as well, confirming the observation from Earth. Now, it was hard to explain what they were, it was also kind of hard to explain what caused them, but they looked like a kind of a fluorescent cloud coming from one of the craters. So, in essence, these phenomena seem to be both small-scale and large-scale, short-lasting and long-lasting, and they seem to have possibly different origins from different types of uh, events happening on the moon. Now, one of the most well-publicized researchers who actually studied this in a lot of detail um, is this guy right here, Zdenek Kopal. Um, he is the Czech astronomer and basically the lunar expert. Uh, back in the days, he was the go-to guy for anything related to the moon. And he's also described and seen these transient lunar events. And um, according to him, they were most likely caused by the solar activity that then excited the surface of the moon, creating a kind of a dust cloud that was then um, partially luminescent and visible from Earth. So in other words, a lot of famous astronomers um, have seen these events, they tried to describe them, they tried to explain them, but as of today, we still have no good explanation. I mean, even William Herschel, back in the 1700s, was able to see and describe these events, but we just don't know what they are. The two documents I posted in the description have hundreds of these documented events, and um, for the most part, none of them have a lot of similarities, 
but they do have similar locations for some reason. And so for this reason, there were at least a few explanations to what could be happening on the surface of the moon that's causing these. So first explanation is obviously related to um, meteorites and asteroids. Maybe just maybe this is actually the result of collisions that sort of created a large dust cloud that is then illuminated by the solar radiation. Some collisions might be bigger, some collisions might be smaller, so they create different types of um, dust clouds. But that explanation doesn't really explain everything, especially the differences in color that we've observed. On the other hand, relatively recently we've detected a lot of various gases escaping from within the moon's crust. Specifically, one of the more common gases that we have here on Earth as well is um, radon. And so radon is actually a radioactive gas, and when excited, it could potentially produce um, fluorescence. As a matter of fact, the radon is known to produce a type of radioluminescence when its temperature is lower below minus 70 degrees Celsius, and it actually um, produces a kind of a yellowish red light. This radioluminescence is very similar to what we often have in, um, well, this is actually a type of a clock that you can see at night. Uh, and um, in essence, if radon escapes from the surface of the moon and is then lowered in temperature, while at the same time reaches a very specific condition, it could potentially produce this light that we're observing. So it could be gases, it could be things like radon or other gases that are coming out of the surface of the moon by um, various um, cracks that are created through, for example, moonquakes or even collisions with various asteroids. And if it is gases, this is actually super important for us to find out about because if these gases leak out of the surface of the moon and there are actual astronauts living on the surface, they could potentially be in a lot of hazard. Radon, if you didn't know anything about it, is responsible for the highest amount of radioactivity most of us, or actually all of us, receive on Earth. We get a lot of radiation from um, the sun, we also get a lot of radiation from cosmic rays, but most of the radiation in our body actually comes from radon that we're inhaling, which is why it's important to test your house once in a while, especially if you're in a lower level, for the presence of radon. So radon could be a huge hazard for future astronauts, living on the moon of course. But then there is another explanation, and this results from the fact that the surface of the moon is actually very, very electrostatic. As a matter of fact, if you were to land here, you get zapped. There's a lot of electricity produced and sort of stored on the moon from all of the interaction with the solar radiation that's usually positively charged particles that strike the surface of the moon. NASA has actually even observed the so-called levitating dust that you can sort of see here that's caused by the electrostatic repulsion from the surface that causes a lot of lunar dust to basically float around and create these um, relatively strange and somewhat dangerous winds around the moon. But at the same time, all of this static electricity on the surface can also create all kinds of visual effects. So sort of think of what lightning does here on Earth all of these plasma effects could potentially be created on the moon too, through various phenomena that we don't really understand really well yet. And maybe this is actually what we're seeing from all of these unusual transient lunar phenomena. And so, so far we have three relatively solid explanations. Potentially all three are actually correct. One is the micrometeorites and asteroids, two is the outgassing from inside the moon, and three is the actual static electricity on the surface. But then there's another explanation that potentially applies to a lot of these observations. The explanation here um, results from the fact that it's basically kind of difficult to have a relatively accurate and relatively precise picture of the moon from Earth. Here's an example. Now, it's relatively difficult to see what's happening here, but this is actually six different shots from six different cameras of the same region of the moon. And as you can see, it almost looks like it's moving. But all of this is due to the effects of the atmosphere here on Earth. So depending on where you are on Earth and where you're looking at the moon from, you might actually see different things, and because of the atmosphere, it will look slightly different. So some of these transient lunar phenomena could be actually because of the atmospheric effects of Earth, or basically just poor observation. But even though we technically have no idea what's really happening here, there is good news. And I really wanted to end this on a positive note. The uh, researcher from Germany, whose name is Hakan Kayal, has actually recently been able to create a kind of an observatory in Spain where it's relatively easy to see the moon. He's going to be using this moon telescope right here that's located in Spain for really one task only, to identify and to explain these unusual phenomena. His main goal is to um, look at the moon for as long as he can 
and try to uh, document, list, and photograph all of these events, and then use the modern science to try to explain what's really happening, because it is super important for us to understand if any of these events could potentially cause hazard to future lunar missions. We know that China is going back to the moon, we know that the US is going back to the moon, Russians also mentioned that they want to go back, as did India, who's launching a mission relatively soon. But it's very likely that US is going to be the first country with an actual manned colony on the moon where these events could be hazardous. So that is why he wants to explain these events before 2024 when NASA is planning to go back. Once we figure this out, and once we actually know if it's dangerous or not, and what's really causing these, we'll be able to finally answer if a lunar colony is the thing that we'll be able to build permanently, or if it's something that could actually potentially become dangerous for human life. But anyway, until we discover more about these unusual phenomena, I think I'm going to stop this here. Now, like I said, we don't really know what they are, but hopefully we'll discover relatively soon. And once we do, I'll make sure to make a follow-up video explaining exactly what we've discovered, so do subscribe if you still haven't. Make sure to share this video with someone who enjoys learning science and wants to know more about space and also wants to know more about recent scientific discoveries and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.